it's hard to imagine anything that, that would have as much long-term effect as a success. My name is Seth Shostak, and I'm the senior astronomer at what's called the SETI Institute in California. SETI is just an acronym. It's down, it stands for the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. So we're looking for evidence of life beyond Earth, but not just any kind of life. We're not looking for microbes or something like that. We're looking for intelligent life. What we do is very similar to uh, what was done in the movie Contact with Jodie Foster, in fact. We're trying to find the aliens not by waiting for them to land here. I, I don't think they've done that, although many people do. Or, or going there, as they do so often on television or in the movies, where we just get into a rocket ship, blast off, and go visit the aliens at home. Uh, that would be a good thing to do if you could do it, but we really can't. Our rockets don't go nearly fast enough to reach the stars. But there's another way that you might find out that uh, we're maybe not the smartest things in the galaxy something that many people like to believe is true, and that is to eavesdrop on signals that any technological society might be broadcasting. For example, radio signals, or perhaps they have giant lasers and they're pinging our world with flashes of light. So we use sophisticated instruments, big telescopes really, to try and either pick up radio signals or flashing lights from other star systems. While we haven't found any life beyond Earth so far, there have been developments, mostly in the field of astronomy in the last oh, decade or two, that at least encourage me personally, and I, I think uh, uh, scientists in general, to think that you know, there, there probably is good reason to suspect we're going to find some life. For example, the discovery of planets around other stars. If, if you'd ask most astronomers you know, 15 years ago, do you, do you think there are planets around other stars? I think the majority of them would have said, well, yes, that seems quite reasonable. But there were no data. You couldn't actually prove that. Well, now there are data, and we found more than 400 planets uh, uh, around other stars. That number per se is not so interesting, although it's a big number. What's interesting is the fraction of stars that have planets. That fraction may be on the order of a half, maybe even more. We'll learn that in the next thousand days, thanks to a, a NASA probe called Kepler. It's actually a telescope in space. And we'll know what fraction of planets are like the Earth, what fraction of stars have planets that might have big liquid oceans. So that's a very encouraging sign, because it didn't have to be that way. The other thing we've learned is that more planets than we might have originally surmised might have liquid water. Uh, everybody's thinking of Mars. Mars is everybody's favorite inhabited planet. And really, if you could send Bruce Willis to Mars and have him dig down a couple of hundred feet, you know, uh, to where there are undoubtedly liquid aquifers and pull up some of that liquid muck, well, you might find bacteria in it. Okay. But in addition to Mars, there are on the order of a half dozen other worlds, mostly moons of the outer solar system around Jupiter and Saturn, that might also have vast hidden oceans of liquid water, and it's hard to imagine that they're all sterile, could be, but at least it suggests that if life isn't common, the habitats for life are common, and that suggests strongly to me that you know, our quest is not in vain. We're gonna find that uh, we're not the only kids on the block. This project requires developing a lot of interesting digital technology, receiver technology, constructing big uh, antenna farms, if you will, uh, new kinds of telescopes and so forth. So yes, it has a, a kind of spin-off, a kind of knock-on effect, uh, in terms of the technology. But really, this is, this, this is exploration. I mean, it's a bit like asking uh, Captain Cook, you know, well, what, what, what benefit is it to us here paying your way to go sail the South Pacific if you don't really find too many islands? Is there any benefit to that? Well, there are some benefits. There are benefits in terms of uh, navigation. There are benefits in terms of, you can think of things. But fundamentally, it's exploration. And you do it because to explore and then possibly find something that would profoundly change the way we view ourselves it's hard to imagine anything that, that would have as much long-term effect as a success.